As we head into math around crankshafts and camshafts, our first topic is going to be engine balancing. So engine balancing just makes everything, sure everything weighs the same as in the sink, and why do we do it? Well, if you drive a car and your tire's out of balance, it's rough, right? Same thing, you wanna have a smooth operating engine, so you need to have it balanced. Within your engine, you have lots of bearings, crank pins where uh, there's contact. If you are out of balance, the wear on those will be uneven and they'll wear out much faster. So you have increased bearing life if you balance your engine. Um, and likewise, you will increase your fuel economy because the minute you're out of balance and you're spinning an object, you're using more fuel. Okay, so what part of an engine will we balance and how does this relate to crankshafts and camshafts? It's because we're going to balance a crankshaft. We're going to start by balancing the piston assemblies here. So when I talk about piston assembly, I mean the piston itself, uh, the wrist pin that goes in it, any like little rings that are going to hold it together, all that assembles. The connecting rods, we're going to have the large end of the connecting rod or the bottom of the connecting rod. And we're also going to balance in here the top end of the connecting rod. And then finally, once we balance all those, we will balance the crankshaft itself by working with the counterweights that are opposite our little bearing journals. So what we have to understand is that we have two types of motion within that system. So we have reciprocating motion, which is back and forth, right? Like a handsaw. And where we see reciprocating motion is here. As the crank turns, the pistons go up and down. They are reciprocating. They're going back and forth, up and down. And our rotating or our turning motion as the crank turns, looking head on here, this part is also turning. So that is a rotating motion. Reciprocating, rotating. Just so we get the formulas right. So we need to know our assemblies that are gonna do both those motions. Our reciprocating parts, the reciprocating assembly will consist of the piston assembly. So we said pistons with the wrist pins installed, as well as the top of the connecting rod here. Okay, so there's two parts to the reciprocating assembly. The rotating assembly consists of the crankshaft here and the bottom of the connecting rod. Now, we're going to balance this, this, and this in order to figure out how to balance the crankshaft as a last step. So remembering which parts are reciprocating and which parts are rotating. And if you're stuck, you just think of that emotion, right? You just think of what each part is doing as you spin that crankshaft. Okay, so here's our steps. We are going to balance the pistons first. And when you balance the pistons, you are just dealing with that head and the wrist pin. I keep saying it over and over again. You're gonna balance the top of the connecting rods, then we're gonna balance the bottom of the connecting rods. We're gonna do a little math after that point and figure out how to balance the crankshaft given steps one, two, and three. So we're gonna go through each step here. There's only math at the end. I'm just talking at you for a long time, sorry. Okay, balancing the pistons. So you're assembling everything and you're just gonna slap it on a scale, whatever you have. Obviously this is something that usually doesn't happen in your average shop. It's kind of when you're doing higher level stuff. Um, you're gonna weigh each piston, okay? And instead of making them all weigh the same by adding weight, which isn't going to make sense in a high heat, high spin kind of tough conditions, you're going to remove material from the pistons until they all weigh the same. If you look inside a piston, usually you will see a place that is designed just for that. So if this is like the open end where the connecting rod is, there usually is going to be a little piece that you can shave off material to shave off weight. And the idea is you're going to weigh all those pistons and you want each one to weigh the same as the lightest one because you can always remove material. It's really hard to add material. So 
when you look at the example down here, we have a six cylinder engine. Obviously we have six pistons. We've weighed them all and we go through the numbers, find the smallest one, 485 grams. You're going to make each one of these weigh 485 by removing material. Okay. So by your done time you're done with this particular engine, you're going to have the pistons balance with a weight of 485 grams each. The other part of the reciprocating assembly, the top of the connecting rods that go up and down, or the small end of the connecting rod, will usually have a balance pad right up at the top. And that's where you're going to shave the material off there. So same idea, you're going to hold the large end while you weigh the small end. Um, and then you're going to remove material from the top balance pad until they all weigh the same as the lightest. Same idea. And that takes care of your reciprocating assembly. For your rotating parts, you're going to assemble the connecting rod bottom with all the bearings in place and weigh them all. There's a balance pad that you're going to remove material from. Once again, all connecting rod bottoms must weigh the same as the lightest one was originally. Okay, in order to balance a crankshaft, you have these big counterweights that you can shave material off of, and they're kind of opposite where each connecting rod attaches at the crank pin or journal. You take the crank and you spin it on a machine, and this is like tire balancing, right? So you spin it on the machine, and the machine will tell you where to remove material. So instead of adding tire weights, you're going to shave off material on the counterweights in order to balance the crank. And that's that last step. Okay. So what do we need in order to balance a crankshaft? We need to know the bob weight of our engine. And the bob weight is just the weight that we figure out from rotating and reciprocating and use to balance the crank, okay? So here's the formula. The bob weight is equal to rotating weight, the entire rotating weight, plus the reciprocating weight divided by two. So whatever the reciprocating weight is, you must divide it by two first, for adding it to the rotating weight. Now, the only thing that goes into the rotating weight for this formula is the weight, that minimum weight of the bottom of the connecting rod. So you're not going to use a bunch of measurements. You're going to pick the smallest weight, and that is your rotating weight. Your reciprocating weight has two things in it, the top of the connecting rod and the piston assembly. So the lightest connecting rod top and the lightest piston assembly go into the reciprocating weight. When you do that, you find the bob weight and the bob weight is what you put into your machine or your to balance your crankshaft. So let's look at an actual example after all that talking. Okay, here we go. We have a four cylinder engine. We've weighed all of the things. You're not going to have to actually weigh anything for me. You're just going to get information from me. So piston assembly, top of rod, uh, bottom, of, bottom of connecting rod. So you're going to go through, and when I say balance the pistons, number one here, I just want you to pick the lightest one. So the lightest one between cylinders one to four is 493. So when I balance, air quotes, the pistons, I will create four pistons that each weigh 493 grams. When I balance the top of the connecting rod, looking through, I see 213, 216, 218, you know, it doesn't matter if two have the same weight, then it's a minimum, that's going to be your minimum weight. So I'm going to add them after I'm finished with the connecting rods, the tops will all weigh 213 grams. When I balance the bottom of the connecting rod, so looking through, looks like it's going to be 467 as the lightest and they'll all weigh 467 grams. Okay, so let's look at number four here. Our reciprocating weight is going to be the pistons plus the top. Those are the things that are going up and down. So I look at the values I picked, what we'll have when they're balanced. So we're going to take 493 and we're going to add 213 and we get a reciprocating weight of 706 grams. And our rotating weight is just going to be the connecting rock bottom 
467 grams. To figure out the bob weight we're going to need in order to balance the crankshaft, we take our rotating weight, 467 grams, and we add it to the reciprocating weight, 706 grams divided by 2. You do this math first. Divide 706 by 2 and then add 467. Our bob weight is going to equal 820 grams. And that's what you, you would use in order to balance the crankshaft. This is what test questions often look like. They would have a list A to F, different things. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and highlight my small list or minimum weight for each item. So the piston assembly, the smallest weight is 442. For the connecting rod small end or the top end, the smallest weight is 199. And for the connecting rod large or bottom end, the smallest weight is at 432. Okay, so I've highlighted what I need to go ahead and answer all these questions. What will be the weight of all the piston assemblies when they are balanced? Well, you're going to make them all weigh the minimum, which is 442 grams. What will be the weight of all the connecting rod small ends when they are balanced? 199 grams. And what will be the weight of all the large connecting rod ends when they are balanced? 432 grams. Okay, what will be the reciprocating weight? So that consists of the piston assembly and the top and the things that go up and down 442 plus 199 equals 641 grams what will be the rotating weight that is just the stuff that spins which is the bottom end of the connecting rod so that's 432 grams what bob weight should be used when balancing the crankshaft the bob weight is equal to the rotating weight, and this is on your formula sheet, plus the reciprocating weight divided by two. I'm running out of room here, and I get 752.5 grams. So, Bob weight, I'll write it over here. 752.5 so that's for a four cylinder engine. What can we change on you? We could add more cylinders, but everything remains the same. I've seen people and they try and incorporate all the measurements, all the weights, like they try and average it or something like that. You're not averaging, you're picking the lightest one because you're not gonna take some piston assemblies and shave off material while you add material to others. You're gonna make them all weigh the same as the lightest one. Going through highlighting, piston assembly lightest, rod top lightest, Seems to always be the top one of these. And the rod bottom lightest is here. Same thing. Piston assemblies will weigh that 430 grams. It's almost free marks. Uh, small connecting rod ends, 202 grams. Large connecting rod ends, 423 grams. Reciprocating weight, piston assembly plus connecting rod top. 632 grams. Rotating weight, just connecting rod bottom, 423 grams. Bob weight equals, actually I'm going to do it up over here, sorry. Bob weight <laughs> equals the rotating weight, 423 plus the reciprocating weight, 632 divided by 2. You do that action first before you do the addition and you should get 739 grams. So that's all the math I need to know you to know for engine balancing.